Chelsea's transfer window has been nothing short of amazing. There have been moments of frustration for Chelsea fans, happiness, excitement, ecstasy, and some worrying times as well. Less than 24 hours ago, it was announced by Fabrizio Romano, here we go, Elise Dunn. David Ornstein, that the deal was happening, the deal was progressing. And an hour or so ago, the chairman of Crystal Palace announced that Michael Olise had just signed a new four-year deal to stay at Crystal Palace. And the initial knee-jerk reaction from fans is to say, oh, he didn't really want you, he's used you for a new deal, why has this happened? But it comes down to yet another allegation against Chelsea Football Club during this transfer window and over the course of 2023 of cheating. This time, and this comes from the secret scout, very respected in the Chelsea community, that Chelsea, uh, Crystal Palace, sorry, were going to show evidence of Chelsea tapping up Michael Elise. The accusations of cheating and the scandal surrounding it continue to happen to Chelsea. Now, the fact that the deal is off after being after triggering the release clause and the player agreeing personal terms, there's something in that. Chelsea have done something to some degree of wrongdoing for them to step away and not to progress with this deal. We've seen examples in the past where Southampton were not happy with Liverpool's approach with Van Dijk. He didn't sign a new deal, but Liverpool stepped away to stop a formal investigation and then went back for the player in January. And I expect something similar to happen in this situation. But the accusations come thick and fast. This started yesterday with Chelsea to make a tapping up complaint to the Premier League after they believed the Blues crossed the line in the £35 million deal. This has led to the headline underneath that Chelsea target Elise signs a shock new four-year contract with Palace. And this news was so fresh, none of the journalists knew it was coming. No, nobody was briefed. No PR around this. It was just straight up out. This morning, I spoke to a very reputable journalist uh, via direct messages, and he said, yep, he's signing the deal. Medical's going to be done. The formal announcement will be coming soon. It's from literally 6 a.m. this morning when I got that message up until around midday, one o'clock, the world had changed on this deal. But I want to get every, everybody's opinion surrounding the situation with Chelsea because I've got a take on this. I want to go through some of the other elements here. We saw last week the possibility of points deductions amid a Premier League investigation into alleged financial breaches. Now, these financial breaches took place before Todd Bowley and Cole Co took over. So that needs to be said. Chelsea have essentially reported themselves to the Premier League to say we have found some financial irregularities in terms of the operations where money has been sent please investigate us and we'll suffer the consequences of the outcome of this investigation. No charges have been made yet, but Chelsea very much self-reported. There were, of course, was accusations of cheating coming from many Premier League teams, many, many professional pundits, Gary Neville, namely Jamie Carragher, for the connection that Chelsea supposedly have with PIF and Saudi Arabia. When a number of their players, the likes of Mendy, Koulibaly, and at the time, Hakim Ziyech were linked with moves to Saudi. People saw that as very strange. People saw that very much as, well, Clear Lake have got investment from PIF in, in Saudi Arabia, and suddenly these Saudi teams are spending more money on these players than we all think they're worth. This cannot be right. A major investigation is needed into this situation. Many, many a fan of all the top six clubs, plus pundits and journalists, as you can see by these articles, were calling for investigations. They demanded, they stated it was cheating from Chelsea. There was also accusations earlier on in the year, in January, claiming that Chelsea are accused of using long-term deals to cheat FFP rules. England's top sides will battle it out uh, to host matches, that's something to do that, whilst the Premier League are in talks with clubs to tackle down. You know, the rest of the headline doesn't matter. But they're accused of cheating, FFP. This summer, they have again been accused of cheating FFP. They're breaking the rules. This can't be right. They're sticking two fingers up and everybody else is sitting within it. There's even been accusations this summer from outside of the Premier League that Chelsea are accused of cheating by the La Liga president. 
And he angrily points his finger at Chelsea with the types of contracts they're offering, the amount of money they're spending. And then in conjunction with the connections to Saudi and the FFP breaches and the investigations, Chelsea surely are not doing things right. And the tapping up allegations are going to lead to more people believing that Chelsea are cheats. But what's the real truth of this? And for me, it's very, very clear. The jealousy towards Chelsea, the fear, the anger, the frustration that Chelsea, after one terrible year, are already on the way back to prominence, already on their way back to challenging, has annoyed people to a point that they've got to find an excuse. They have to find their comfort blanket to make them feel better. They need mummy's bitty to get through this situation. Now, of all the things that Chelsea have been accused of, the only one that I believe holds any water is overstepping the line and tapping up Elise. Now, am I angry about this as a rival? No. Do I actually want this to be investigated and become and for a precedent to be set? No. Why, you may ask? Oh, Terry simping for Chelsea will be the basic response from some people in the comments, the haters. But the reason I don't want the investigation is because I am sure that all of our clubs do this. I am sure that 99.7% of our clubs tap up in some way and in some shape and in some form. And when you start to investigate one, typically life has proven this to us through multiple other injuries, uh, industries that get investigated, is you open up a can of worms and you may end up facing problems. You may end up in trouble. So from my point of view, look, their punishment is they don't get a lease. They're probably going to have to pay more money for him in the future to land him if indeed they go back. They may not go back in for him. That's probably why Elise has been given a nice, hefty pay rise by Crystal Palace so that everybody wipes their mouth of this situation and moves on. All the other situations, the points deduction for things that Roman's team did wrong, they see the severity of what comes out in the investigation, but the fact that Chelsea have reported themselves tells me if there is any punishment, if there, there are any major wrongdoings, the maximum it's going to be is a fine, which they will be able to afford fairly comfortably. And again, the situation gets moved on. Are they cheating in relation to their relationship with Saudi Arabian clubs? Absolutely not. All of our clubs have sold or tried to sell, sell players to that league. We have all had inquiries or and or sold players to that league. So that's another one of those Chelsea, when people start top, topping up in their, totally up in their mind, all these different allegations of Chelsea cheating, you have to break them all down individually and see what you're left with. So first and foremost, they've reported themselves for the alleged breaches under Roman. They don't know what the outcome of it is going to be yet. They may not even be charged. It may be seen by the Premier League and by UEFA as no big deal. So until they're charged, they haven't done anything wrong. When it comes to Saudi Arabia, 100% nothing wrong. There is no weird relationship that they have with Saudi clubs that other teams don't. Liverpool fans were outraged by Chelsea being able to raise money through those sales, only for themselves to raise 50 to 60 million through selling two of their star players. Man United tried to sign, uh, sell Eric Bailly. Arsenal were in talks at one point of Thomas Partey moving to that club. It goes so on and so forth. Laporte is about to join from Manchester City. So everybody's involved in this. Chelsea didn't cheat there. In terms of calling them out for FFP, that is sour grapes. Sour grapes that their ownership, their accountants, their lawyers looked at the rules and said, how can we spend more money in the short term to build a brilliant squad, to buy lots of youngsters to either become first team players or we can sell on massive profits in the future? How can we speed that process up? They found, you know, you can call them loopholes, but loopholes make it sound like you're still breaking rules and being immoral. Chelsea just found innovative, excellent, in my opinion, ways of spending more money in the short term, buying and landing more targets, and being ahead of the curve. They were so ahead of the curve, and there was such a knee-jerk reaction from Europe. What the other clubs should have done is not complained and said, we can do the same thing. But instead, they all complained and got the rules changed. Now nobody can do it. You know what I said earlier about not wanting the tapping up to be investigated? You'll probably find you'll create new rules and laws that damage your own club. Or you end up in trouble yourselves. Sometimes people in this world cut their nose off to spite their face. When I was a kid, 
sometimes you know there was a way of getting out of school early or you get to do something you shouldn't do there was one kid that would bait it up and ruin it for you all that's what's happening here and the ffp side of things they were breaking no rules they are not cheating there is nothing wrong with what chelsea have done but the clubs have cried now the rules have been changed and nobody can benefit from those rules they become more stringent and when it comes to the league moaning listen they're brokies the Premier League has spent £1.4 billion on transfers during this window. La Liga has spent £250 odd million. And half of that was Jude Bellingham. They're broke. Their league, as I've said, told you all for every year I've been on socials, that La Liga doesn't touch the Premier League. Now, maybe you prefer the style. Maybe you think they're better ballers. Great. That isn't the debate. Which league is better? The one that gets watched by everybody, the one that has the most viewers, the one that is the most compelling, the one that makes the most money, the one that is the most successful. That's it. The general consensus agree with me because they tune into this league. And part of that is our marketing and the way we put the package together. But it all feeds into the same thing. The league is better. The fact we can spend 1.4 billion and they can spend only 250 million. And most of that was by Real Madrid. We've done a great job. So again, I'm not taking his dig seriously because he'd dig at your club if you were doing well in spending money. He probably has. I just don't bother look at it. So when you break it down, out of all these things Chelsea have been accused of, the big cheating scandal, there's probably one thing they've done wrong. But it's the same thing that your club probably done. Snapping up. You telling me, Arsenal fans, you guys weren't talking to the Declan Rice back in February? Man United fans, you don't think Ten Hag picked up the phone to Lissandro? Anthony, you don't think he's doing that now? We're going back. We know he did it with Frankie de Jong. Come on now. We all know our clubs do stuff like this. So again, I'm not going to stand in my big, massive glass house and start throwing rocks about because I'm going to smash my own windows. It's as simple as that. Viewers, let me know what you think and feel about the situation with Chelsea. Should there be any punishment in your opinion? Or are we looking at a storm in a giant teacup here? Give me your thoughts. Give me your feelings. Please smash the like button. Please make sure you subscribe as well. And we'll see you all again very, very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.